Can I take some home with me? <laughs> no. I even rolled one for you. Oh, thank you. There you go. Now, when you talk about governments taking their time, I, I think of the founders that are up here with us today who had a, a vision and a dream. And they could see how long it takes for governments to get things in motion all the time. And they said, we're just not going to wait for the government. We're going to get involved ourselves and we're going to make sure that something good help happens for those that are our special people in our community. And without their vision and dream, we wouldn't be here today because it was a little over 40 years ago that they started on this journey. And I just want to personally thank them for having that vision and dream and the will and the courage to follow through with it so that we can have this major event here today. Well, we just happen to have something here for Don. He's an old hockey player, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll get him put this put this jersey on here. here. I want you to know when I played uh, hockey, I was a goaltender, and I want you to know I made a lot of millionaires in hockey because I didn't stop all the pucks, and that's why they became millionaires, and I'm back here with you today. Hey, all right! Yeah, 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 that's okay. No, no, no. If there's other ones that want to be involved, we'd also like to get their picture. Come on. Oh, God. Thank I'm almost in the back row. Okay, is everyone ready? Yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to officially open the facility right here on three. So we're going to count one, one two, two, three. Well, one of the most important uh, and 
pleasurable things about getting involved in any organization, but particularly this one, are the friends you make along the way. Uh, and Dawn and I became friends through all the trials and tribulations we had with the city. I don't know how many conversations we had, but they were always focused on helping Cosmo. And so friendships developed, and, and that's what it's all about. That's, that's why, I, why I think we all, we all stay involved. And Cosmo has never had a better friend than Dawn. So it's my honor to present you with our highest award. Please come up. Cosmo gets 
five. That's ten, right? He says, yeah. He said, well, where do I fit into it? <laughs> and he says, you get the joy of knowing that someone else is receiving the benefits. And it's absolutely true uh, about that. I didn't want anything at all. I was just glad that we're able to do all of that. And when I think about uh, things in general, having been the mayor in Saskatoon, I, I think of President Reagan all the time. He said about the eight most dreaded words in the English language. I'm from the government. I'm here to help. <laughs> and whenever the government says they're here to help, you better buckle down and you better start figuring out what's going to go wrong for you along the way. And so when I think about the visionaries of Howie, Alan, Garth, who said they just weren't going to wait for government to help them, that they're going to go out and do it themselves. And I tell people all the time, if you're waiting for the government for you to do it for you, you're going to be standing at that bus stop an awfully long time, because the bus usually doesn't come. And when you think about what they've been able to accomplish from the vision that they had over the years, to have something that is so special and unique in all of Canada, and I think all of North America. And I'd have people come through the mayor's office, and we'd be talking about different special needs, whatever the case is, and I would talk about Cosmo and what they were doing. They couldn't believe that something like that could actually happen anywhere. That's not Saskatoon, but anywhere at all. And they'd always say to me, you know, you really are lucky to be a mayor of such a special community. And it really is true. It's the hearts and souls of the community that make the difference in the end. I think of all the different programs that the Cosmos have gone through. And I remember the first time I was in as the mayor, and they're taking me through, and we're seeing everything, and how wonderful and exciting it was. And we went upstairs, and they're showing me all the beer that's up there, <laughs> and how it's all going to be poured down the drain. And I said, it's really too bad my dad's not here today. Because <laughs> <laughs> I said, make sure you don't follow any control test to make sure just the bad ones are going down the drain. <laughs> I think of the paper story. And how wonderful that was. And that was a wonderful story. How we would come to see me and explain that we need some money from the city and that we need to get this done in order to keep the program more viable along the way. And so I'm trying to figure out, like, how can we get to the other end? We just had a federal election. The Conservatives had just won federally. And we had the most powerful woman in all of Canada. Minister Skelton. And so I said, I'm going to phone the minister up. I'm going to talk to her. We're friends. So I phoned the minister and told her about how we were going to need some help. She was in charge of economic, Western economic diversification. And I'm sure this program should fit in somewhere. Just haven't figured out how yet, but it should fit in. So we were talking away, and I can tell I'm kind of losing her interest for a second. And then I thought about it, and I said, you know, we can't get the provincial government to come along with us on this. They won't even talk about it with us at all. Wouldn't it be great to see the federal conservative government that's participated in this program, and the provincial government isn't there? Wouldn't that be just fantastic? And she said, we're in. <laughs> So then I went to the provincial government and said, the only federal government is there, you should have been. <laughs> we didn't come along for the ride. And so consequently, the province came too. And we were able to get Howie and Cosmo figured out the rest of it. We were able to get the, the paper sorter. That's how great it was. But it was interesting with the previous government. We were down there for Cosmo's Christmas dinner. And we're having lunch there together. I don't know if it was a plan or not. But I was sitting there with the Premier and one of the participants. And the Premier says to the participant, how are things going for you these days? Not very good. <laughs> oh, well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I had to take a cut in pay because the provincial government cut our funding. <laughs> <laughs> The premier turned white, <laughs> didn't know what to say. And I said, well, I said to myself, isn't it wonderful that we have participants like that? And they don't know any better. 
They just tell them the truth. That's all they do each and every day. How are you feeling today? Great or I'm not feeling good, whatever the case is. You look great today, you never look easy. You don't look very good today at all. <laughs> Are you all late last night, whatever? <laughs> that's, that's just life, okay? And how excited they all are about everything. But I have to tell you, one of my biggest disappointments through everything was with the uh, recycling program. And how we tried so hard to make sure that Cosmo got the, the program in the end. And I can tell you, it was a vicious fight. As a matter of fact, Councillor Nolte lost his life over it. The night, on a Monday night, at the executive committee, we were in the room, and I can tell you, people were literally going across the table at each other. It was vicious. As a mayor, I finally was able to bring some order to the situation once again. And we took a break so that people could just cool down. Because those who believe in Cosmo believe so strongly in Cosmo and all the good that they're doing that they just couldn't understand how everyone else couldn't be on that same particular page because it was for the benefit of our entire community. It wasn't about money. I remember talking to Councillor Nolte out in the hallway. I said, Councillor Nolte, don't worry. We'll get through this. Don't worry. We'll, we'll get this all figured out yet. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get there. And that night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I received a phone call from Councillor Height that Councillor Nolte had had a massive heart attack and died. And the winds kind of went out of the sails at that particular point in time on the recycling issue. I couldn't believe that people were talking about how much money we should tax Cosmo Industries on property taxes. And I'm saying to myself, this is just for the good of the community. Nobody's making a buck out of this deal. Every dollar that's raised is turned back into the organization again. Any other community in Canada would give their IP to have people like this in their community doing the same thing. But everybody talks about what they want to do, but never anyone does it. And here in this particular case, you had people who actually rolled up their sleeves and got to work and got the job done. And we want to talk about taxes, about what breaks we got along the way, what else can we nail them for? I said to myself, what type of community do we have when we have people talking like that? That was probably one of the lowest points my time as mayor of the city of Saskatoon. We had people on our administration that were dishonest. And I use the word dishonest. They were untruthful in any way, shape, or form. Every number that Mike Stenzel gave me that I took back to our meetings, <coughs> talked about in a public forum, has come true today. Every single thing. Mike is the guru of recycling in Canada. If you want to know something about recycling, talk to Mike. And so consequently today, we hear now about needing a new landfill site. It's going to cost tens of millions of dollars to do it. I can't believe the stories that I hear all the time because really and truly there's so much more that can be done with recycling that's being done today. To this very day, Mardell and I Still so pack up those papers every second or third week, put in the back of the SUV, and then off I go to the Cosmo bins over at the Lakewood Center and dump all my papers in there all the time, along with our cardboard, and that's it. And the true recycling program in the end is what Mike and I really talked about, is having sorting stations. People who use blue bins put it in there and they go, I saved the world. You save nothing. When you think of the millions of tons of waste today that the Chinese no longer will take, and everybody's panicking because what are we going to do with it? Well, maybe finally people will get down and listen to the common sense and reality what really needs to happen in that particular area. I guess I'm lecturing too much or talking too much about some of these things, but I just wanted to, to talk about that. Can you say the guru thing? <laughs> Ah, 
Let me make this perfectly clear at this time. <laughs> Mike Stensrud is the guru of recycling in Canada, hip hop North America. <laughs> but it's true. Everything we said, every single thing that was said has come to fruition. We were told that we didn't know what we were talking about. That how dare we challenge their numbers. Well, now we know. But I did want to talk about the Viapon for a second too. I was on that particular committee at Riverside on the Club Captains Committee. And we were meeting over at the airport. The fellow's name was Ron James, was the pro at Riverside. And he was telling us we need to have the Viapon at Riverside, how great it's going to be and how wonderful it's going to be for our community. And then the board said, Viapon, what's the Viapon? Well, we yeah, Golf tournament, we went through the whole thing just like we always have. We're going to get some money and everything else. It'll be great. So I don't know. And so finally, we decided that we would go ahead with it. And the first few years, as a matter of fact, I was very lucky the very first year, our team finished second. I got a TV set out of the deal. <laughs> and when you think about it, the tournament was bound to be successful in the end because that particular morning, it had poured rain. And I mean, not for it a little bit, but it was hour after hour. The tournament was just to start at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We started at 2 o'clock in the afternoon that day. And the skies parted and the sun came up. It was absolutely spectacular uh, to be able to play in that particular tournament. And I've played in that tournament almost every single year. I think last year was the first year that I actually was able to participate in it. Uh, but all the other years I've participated in the tournament. My dad, through the store, um, gave the winners their clothing and that sort of thing. My dad said to me one time, he says, Christ, he said, I don't understand. How come normal guys just can't win the pool? Why do they have to be giants or shrimps? <laughs> <laughs> and so we have guys like 48 inch waist. They're going away in the summertime to play. The factories are all closed. And so we try to get them to come like the week after the tournament so we can get them fitted and get the stuff ready for them uh, for what we were doing. When we did the uh, expansion openings in that though too, those were always uh, wonderful times yeah. that we had there. You know, it's the one there tonight on the video where we invited the participants up. And for me, I always found a ribbon cutting where a mayor would go just to cut the ribbon by themselves. And they have politicians surrounding them every once in a while. They go, Paul, for politically, that's really good, okay? Because you're the focal point of the picture and everything else. And I said, oh, isn't that nice? But for me, it was never about that. What I wanted, I just wanted to have the participants around me. I wanted to have the people be recorded as being there that particular day so that years later, people could actually go through the pictures and that sort of thing. And they might be able to point out that this was their uncle or this was a niece, a son or a daughter, whatever the case might be along the way, that they, in fact, were part of that special occasion. It was their day. It wasn't my day. And when we had the 40th anniversary and they gave me the jersey, I was so glad to be able to wear it down. And they even had my name on the back. And you know, it's even how it's spelled right. A lot of times they had an M in there along the way. Sometimes people don't get it quite spelled right either. It's S O B, whatever the case might be. <laughs> but you know, that's life. <laughs> but anyway, in conclusion, I truly am honored and privileged to be able to receive this award this evening. I thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for what you've been able to do here. How you're able to, in fact, allow special citizens in our community to be able to participate as regular people, that they've got a job in life, they have a goal, they have something to go to each and every day. It's not as if life is passing them by. I think it was Mike that told me one day his sister would go every day and at the end of the day she would have taken a single telephone book and torn all the pages out of it. And that was what she had been able to accomplish for the day. Well, for her, that was a major accomplishment. That was her life. That was her goal. And I think all the participants that are at different levels in that, and how fortunate we are to be able to help them on their journey too, and how lucky we are to have people like that in our community. 
And Mardell and I, we have a special needs grandson now that's 11 years old. And we're not sure how far else is he's called now. Time flies, I guess we can have fun. <laughs> but uh, he may have the opportunity perhaps to go there. We don't know if he's even capable of being at Cosmo Industries at all. We didn't know that when we started our journey with Cosmo Industries or anything else. But the good Lord works in strange and mysterious ways. It allows us this opportunity to stay connected. To in fact, allow us to know that other people in this world really are special people. And how lucky and fortunate we are to live in the city of Saskatoon. And so as people like you that truly do make a difference, please don't stop. Please remember when your board members are having a difficult board meeting and you're wondering how you're going to get to the other end. The staff is wondering some days, is it ever going to be right again, whatever the case is. Just remember, you are helping so many families out there, the participants being able to participate and have the quality of life that we all would desire to have. Because of that, you truly have made the city of Saskatoon healthier, more vibrant, more caring, compassionate, and understanding. Thank you ever so much, and I truly do appreciate what you've done for our family. Thank you.